Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14, presented by Bearded Iris. Blake, this is the matchup we all circled in preseason in the round of 32. Tigers on Tigers in Sacramento. Are there Tigers in Sacramento? They probably got a zoo. Yeah. Um, you know what, speaking of zoos, we have the ZOU. Missouri is on a roll. Your client, Dennis Gates, is on fire. His team played well in its first game. Princeton pulls the upset of the tournament. So now we get Tigers on Tigers in Sacramento, 510 Central. You can watch that on TNT. The computers have Missouri's about a six and a half point favorite. I say computers, that's Ken Pomeroy, Bart Torvik, BPI, and Jeff Sagarin averaged with a 72% chance to win. Blake, this is the type of game Missouri has won all year. Does Dennis Gates have at least one more in him? Well, I don't know, Chris. We're going to build up to my big pick at the end of this video. Oh, you're such but, a chicken. Um, we, will, we will build up to the, my, my selection for this game. But for now, yes, Missouri obviously, I thought, played really well against Utah State. Um, you know, that was a team, as we talked about, just it, it was one of the dangerous matchups you could have got if you're Missouri. Obviously, Penn State was another one. I think Missouri was very lucky it didn't get that Penn State team we saw last night because uh, it would not be playing uh, on Saturday. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, like we said, Utah State missed shots, but I thought Missouri came out and they were at least, you know, they, they had an approach defensively that put them in a, in a nice position to win the game. And obviously it took making shots too. We've talked about that all year with Missouri. They just, if they're making shots, they are good enough to beat anybody because they have a lot of the other elements. They have a guy that's just a, you know, guy that can just pick anybody's pocket in Des Moines Hodge. And Nick Connor kind of did the same in that game too. But, um, you know, you have, they have a guy that can take over in Kobe Brown offensively. Um, you know, Hodge is also in that category too. He's, he's in multiple categories for this Missouri team. Um, so, and they've just got a chip on their shoulder. Like they, they've got an edge to them as the, you know, as we talked about, they were the lone underdog for the SEC teams when the lines opened up. Yet they were the higher seed and they come out and, and win by 11. And now they get a Princeton team that I'm going to be honest with you, Chris, as I was watching that game, even if it would have been Arizona, the more I started to watch that game, even when Arizona was winning, I was thinking to myself, I, I love Missouri's chances against Arizona a lot more than I did coming into it. And you want to know why? Because I thought Missouri would have just physicaled Arizona to, I mean, to no end, like that was a team that I thought just even Princeton. I mean, I thought Princeton was the more physical team at times in that game. And I think that was something that really stood out. But now when you do look at this Princeton team, right, what are some of the challenges that Princeton's going to face? Well, Chris, do you know what kind of offense the Princeton Tigers run? The uh, Princeton offense? That would be the Princeton offense. Um, there are some certainly some elements of the Princeton <laughs> offense knew? in play for the Princeton Tigers. Um, and long live Pete Carell. Hey, that offense, how many people, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, being in Nashville, how many wins did Kevin Stallings get Vanderbilt from running the Princeton offense at times? A lot. I love and, it. It's fun to watch. Well, it's fun to watch if you're a basketball person for Missouri fans, it may not be fun to watch because that to me, Chris is why, how did they put themselves in position to win that game? What did they do? They shortened the game and, mm. I think the ability to force guys to think defensively, to force them to kind of understand all the elements that are involved in the Princeton offense, where you've got, you know, you've got the back cuts, you've got all this other stuff. It is a game where we talked about Missouri against Utah State. They had to be disciplined for a different reason with Utah State because, you know, it was a team that could anybody on the floor, you felt like could step out and hit a three. Um, you had to rotate well and do all this. There's going to be some very similar aspects here in terms of how Missouri is going to have to approach this defensively because Princeton is going to try to do the same thing. I don't think Princeton's going to win an, an 85 83 type game here. Um, it's going to have to be, again, I think shortening the game a bit, knowing that Missouri's a team that can get up and go. Um, that's how I think Princeton can win this game. And it's, it's interesting, though, when you look at the computers, they do have this like as a higher scoring game. Uh, probably because Missouri has not been great defensively uh, overall. So, yeah, I mean, this is it's, it's, to me, it's just wild we're talking about Missouri versus Princeton, but here we are. 
Yeah, that man, that was a fun game to watch. Uh, Missouri was also fun to watch, just as it was last week in the SEC tournament. I mean, the thing that makes Missouri tough, and we've touched on it, Kobe Brown is just, <clears throat> excuse me, a go-to guy. But so is Demoy Hodge. There are not a lot of teams left, even in this tournament, that have two dudes that you can just count on for buckets. These guys have played a lot of basketball. Um, and if you want to cut through the chase and get to my analysis, I just think that Missouri having those two guys is going to be the difference. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, I think the De- Moy Hodge and his ability to just, it's both sides of the floor, right? It's, it's get the steal to take a possession away from the other team. And then it's go down and hit a three in your face to, you know, not just get a steal and take the possession away from you, but all of a sudden it's a three point swing because, I just go down and hit a three in your face. Like that's just what he does. Like he is, he is one of the most entertaining players out there. Like, I mean, I truly mean that. Like, I don't care who you put him up against, just the way he plays is just so entertaining. Um, And as we always say in tournament scenarios, you want your guys to step up and get you, you have to have your, like the guys have to step up. And those two guys stepped up yesterday but it's not just those, you know, two, right? And I think that's what we keep talking about. It's, you know, Noah Carter stepping up and adding production in, in several different areas. I mean, he had 10 points, six rebounds, five assists. Um, you know, Golson, we know, can hit shots. Um, he can get to the free throw line. Yeah, like it's just, and obviously Nick Honor. I mean, we, we've talked about him for quite a while. I mean, even Sean East, right? We talked about he a couple, you know, gave him a couple baskets down the stretch that were important. Um yeah, I mean, it's just like this Missouri team, you know, without Isaiah Mosley, without Trey Gomillion, they probably don't have the depth that we would have expected, you know, at this point in the season, just not having either of those guys to give them double digit minutes. And obviously they would play different roles. But so, so yeah, so you have to have your guys step up because of that. And, and they've had it. Uh, and, you know, when you talk about how they're going to go up against this Princeton team, I mean, let's, let's look at Princeton for a second, right? they they don't turn people over um you know and and obviously i think even if missouri even if they did missouri's a team that's taking care of the ball this season we talked about that so missouri should be able in in theory to get the offensive possessions they want to get because the team that does not turn a lot of people over um from a a rebounding perspective uh, chris i don't know if you're at this like princeton does a pretty good job if you just look at the numbers right pretty good job of limiting Offensive. They Arizona, do an incredible job of limiting offensive rebounds. Arizona had country. seven, seven offensive rebounds. And remember, Arizona was starting 6'11 and 7 foot, and they only had seven offensive rebounds. So Princeton, a very disciplined, box-out type team that will force you. And that's where I think we talk about discipline for Missouri. Princeton is, we, Chris, the ultimate fundamentals, right? It's all about the fundamentals, the box-outs, the not going over the back to get Kobe Brown in foul trouble, to get somebody else in foul trouble like that's that's crucial too for missouri here that's a, that's kind of an aspect that, that may not be pointed out a ton but you know how they're going to play they are going to play the ultimate basketball old school basketball fundamental type way and guess what that can win you a lot of games um and it's why princeton is sitting here with the chance to go to the sweet 16 is because they do those things well but at the same time i i do i'm you know you look at missouri the Moy Hodge, Kobe Brown, I think the matchups, um, yeah, you would think that having those guys and the ability to step up uh, would, would be pretty huge here uh, when you look at just kind of the matchup here against Princeton. One thing I look at in tournament games, and this is this is amazing. I want to look at this and the fact that Princeton pulled the upset. Missouri is number 17 in experience in Ken Pomeroy. We brought this up in the Penn State preview. That's why I thought Penn State would beat AM. One of the reasons was experience. This Princeton team, you would think that if you said, okay, Princeton beats Arizona in the NCAA tournament, what's the what's the story here? You would think that it's Princeton hitting a ton of threes. No, that didn't happen. Um or, or being a good three point shooting team. Princeton 209 in that. And experience, Princeton is 313 in Division I experience. Yeah. Um there's there's kind of a disconnect between what 
<laughs> you would you would think that Princeton could do and what happened, but again, I, I do think it goes back somewhat to that that offense and it just not being a thing that you see a lot, especially in the SEC where all these coaches seem to run the, the same sort of NBA style offenses. Think about this: if you go into that Princeton Arizona game and I tell you, Chris, that Princeton's going to shoot five free throws for the game and they're going to go four of twenty five from three, you're probably telling me Princeton's losing, by, losing 20, by thirty 20 plus. Like, yeah. <laughs> In all honesty, that's probably what you're telling. But that's where, again, if you're Missouri, you have to zone in on that because they only got the free throw line five times. They went 425 from three, but they won the game. Why? Because they just efficiently took the shots that were were there from them from two. They got, you know, they got those opportunities and they limited the second chance opportunities for a team like Arizona, who outsized them. And yet they, they still were right there. Keep in mind, Princeton was down 12 midway through the second half. And yet they just, they grinded away. They kept the game at their sort of tempo that they wanted to play. And, you know, yes, it helped that Arizona miss some shots that maybe they make otherwise. But Princeton's the team that sort of put the pressure on them. And, and keep in mind, we talked about the turnover stuff. I mean, Arizona had 13 turnovers. Um, so even if Princeton's the team statistically doesn't turn a lot of people over, um, you know, the, they made the plays in that game. So, yeah, it was. It's a strange deal when you look at this kind of game. And for me, Chris, you talked about it. I mean, Missouri has a lot of experience here. They obviously are a team with a chip on their shoulder, but now they're playing another team who kind of is embracing the underdog aspect of this. And so, you know, it's interesting to think about um, because Princeton's now the team that is the ultimate underdog here going up against Missouri, who's playing the, you know, the, the giant role, which is not that, you know, not used to that. So, there will be a lot of people rooting for Princeton uh, to to move on for the Cinderella storyline and all this. But when you really think about it, Missouri is a Cinderella storyline, <laughs> given where things were to start the season and where they are right now and knowing that they are went away from the Sweet 16. All right, Chris. So I guess it's time to make our picks. I already know where you you sit on this. All right. You've you've made it clear. I, th I think you're you're going with Missouri, correct? Yeah. Missouri has how many quad three two and, and four losses. No, Why, don't I do it, Chris. Order, Knock on know. wood, Missouri fans. Oh, my goodness. Don't jinx it, Chris. Um, Missouri. All right. You, okay. Well, Chris, let me say this. All right. I, I've been thinking about this pick. Um, I've been thinking about it long and hard. And you are know, you, th here's the only question I have. Are you going to are you going to say what you think is going to happen? Or are you going to do the anti please, Chris jinx please. again? I've, I've got a job here. Um, <laughs> I've got a job to do. I show up and do my job. So Missouri fans, I don't know if you're you're aware here, but um, I, I told you it's in, a, it's in our back, bylaws. Blake Blake is not allowed to pick Missouri. Is that I told is that kind of how it goes? Well, hold on a second. I told you going back to the Utah State game that not only did I pick against Missouri in our video, I also bet against Missouri, and I don't do that very often. Um, so here's what I'm here to tell you, Chris there is sort of there. I'm going to give you another little, there's a little bit of an Easter egg here too, that we'll talk about after the game, depending on what happens that, that I have in place that I want to see if anyone catches. We'll talk about after the game, but Chris, I can honestly tell you never in the history of filling out an NCAA tournament bracket or making picks for the NCAA tournament here at Southeastern 14. Have I picked the Princeton Tigers to win an NCAA tournament game? All that changes right now because, Chris, I am here to tell you that I am going to pick Princeton as the number 15 seed to advance in the NCAA tournament. You have to do it. To the Sweet 16. And that is what I'm here to tell you. So, Missouri fans, I told you I, I knew I had a job to do, and I am here to do my job. Due to my contract that I have in place, I cannot – reveal the details of that contract, but you know what I have to do. And so Chris, for the first time ever, I'm picking Princeton to advance in the NCAA tournament. Folks, you can, you can bet the house on it. I've picked Missouri. Blake has picked against Missouri. That is the winning combination for Missouri time and time again. That has been a proven formula. Again, there's also an Easter egg here that I want to see if anyone finds I said before, the Easter egg I added before was that I told you after that I bet against Missouri. There's there's another thing that I'm doing right now that 
I want to see if anyone catches. And I will, I will explain it in our next video should a certain team advance. But um, for now, I'll leave it at that. And we will see what happens. It will not be easy. I will tell you that. Princeton, Missouri is going to have to defend. They're going to really have to be at their best on defense, just like they were against Utah State. But if they can force some of those steals, get the game up and down, um, you know, understand that <laughs> defending a Princeton offense is not easy to do. Uh, if Missouri can just hit shots, we'll see what happens. There you go, Chris. There's my there's my expert analysis on this game here. Can you All right, folks. Thanks for again? Or you got it. Okay. Sure. Why not? No. Okay. You you got it. You understand what? I, okay. We're good. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. That doesn't cost you anything. It's like hitting the follow button. Hit the like button if you don't mind. That helps our analytics a little bit. Helps us eventually get paid uh, fund, fund my cold medicine and my caffeine which i'm in need of a lot of both right now my f head feels like it is floating on the ceiling right now hmm. um so if i if i say dumb things i cannot be held responsible for those hold on chris let me, let me ask you a trivia question real quick just because you, you're talking about all this heads i want to make sure you know who who's the head coach in missouri that would still be dennis gates i'm not okay. that out of it round of 32 okay yeah all right then That's you could true. really be concerned but in any case, um, he's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. We're Southeastern 14, presented by Bearded Iris. Thanks for watching. We will be here to tell you what happened in Missouri's game with Princeton. And if Missouri advances, we'll preview that next game. And we'll do every game in the SEC. Wrap-ups for those in the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament. Why would I say SEC tournament? Again, that's... Well, we did. Cold Nets. I mean, we did. We did. That's true. I'm, I'm so out of it right now. But anyway, NCA tournament. That's where we are this week. We're going to recap what happened. We're going to predict what's ahead. Best way to get all that, again, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14, presented by Bearded Iris, and we'll see you soon.